Burra at the University of Pretoria and with the Global Alliance for uh, Rabies Control. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about the introduction to you. Uh, but we are excited to hear about um, tools to capture data at the point of vaccination. Thank you, Andre. Um, so, good still morning, no, good afternoon everyone. Um, I was um, asked to, to present on, on um, the GARC data logger, and um, I think um, all the talks preceding mine this morning have really, really complemented what I want to say. Um, and we know that data collection is often a difficult task. And um, it's especially difficult during vaccination campaigns. And this morning, in all these country reports, we saw these exceptional numbers of vaccinated dogs. But to me, as an outside perspective, they were just numbers. It's just 100,000 dogs vaccinated, 500,000 dogs vaccinated. And, and I would welcome you to show me where those dogs are. Where did you vaccinate those dogs? And quite often that is what funding bodies want to see as well. If vaccine has been purchased, where did it go to? Where are these dogs that are vaccinated? And the problem is that data capture at the point of vaccination is quite often difficult and time consuming. We all know if you've been part of vaccination campaign, it is noisy, it's dirty work, and it is demanding work of the person. And if you do have a dedicated data capturer, they quite often are costly because you have to pay this person to walk around and follow the campaign. And we proposed the solution at the inaugural Paracon meeting. Now, Paracon is the Pan-African Rabies Control Network in 2015. And we proposed data collection based on a clicker device collecting simple data that can be used easily and quickly. And the, the idea was, was to develop something similar to who wants to be a millionaire, a physical piece of hardware that doesn't rely on mobile data. It doesn't have a screen that can break. It's much sturdier. And this was in 2015. And I'm actually quite proud to say that we started developing this product in 2016. We started testing it in 2016, in the middle of 2016, and it's been used in two project sites full time now. And this is the device here. It's got no computer screen that can break. It is simple to use. And in fact, it's used by the vaccinator. There is no data collector or capturer that follows the campaign around. It can be used by the vaccinator. And the device itself is um, it's able to store 500 records per day. And the storing of the records is one of the most important things. The data is stored on the device and is later downloaded to a computer. It remains the property of the campaign manager. The campaign manager or the country can decide what to do with that data. The devices are durable and lightweight. Easy to use, as I mentioned, easy, even by the vaccinator. They can be waterproof very easily. You can use them wearing gloves on. And they charge off a simple micro USB, similar to a Samsung charger. We can charge them in a car, through a wall socket, or through a laptop. And that is essentially the only running cost of these devices, is keeping the battery charged. Um, on a full-time use, we found these batteries of these devices last 8 to 12 hours, which is more than a full work day. Um, one of the biggest drawing powers is this device relies on satellite GPS tracking, not mobile connectivity, so it doesn't require a connection on like a similar to a phone. It re simply requires to a line of sight um, for a satellite. And we have used these devices and tested them all over the world, and we are yet to find a location where it doesn't pick up and connect to a satellite and provide you with your detail. 
Um, and as I mentioned, no mobile network has got um, no running costs. And the when we developed this um, this product, there was a, a it was the toss up between collecting a lot of information and um, essentially perhaps collecting redundant information versus collecting the most required and essential information. And this device itself relies on input to data from the user, which is th three questions with two variables. And in the case of the current use in vaccination, it is a simple question. Are you vaccinating a dog or a cat, adult or juvenile, male or female? That's all that is asked of the user. And as soon as the data is collected, the device adds the exact time, the date and the exact GPS coordinates. And we found at least of the GPS coordinates, it can distinguish between half a meter. So if a vaccinator moves half a meter to the side, it will pin it as a, a completely new location. So it's extremely accurate. Um, as I mentioned, the data is collected and stored on the device at the end of the day. The user can download this to their own computer. And the downloaded file is Excel or CSV file. So it's extremely usable. Um, and a lot of epidemiologists are very proficient with using Excel data to generate graphs and maps, and which makes it usable. And it remains the property of the country. It's their data to decide what to do with. So we found that some instances it's easy for a country to take the data they can draw their own maps and they can disaggregate it but for countries who do not have that skill set available um, Terence Scott will um, in this presentation after me um, talk about the rabies epidemiological bulletin which is a, a data repository that's that's being used and what we have done is to build in an automatic data upload into the bulletin, which means a user can um, very quickly and easily take their data, down, uh, upload it onto this website, and within a few clicks, they have access to their own maps and their own aggregate, this aggregated data that they can use. So the data is downloaded from the device onto the computer. If the user can analyze the data on its own, it's fine. If not, they simply upload it onto this, um, onto this server, import the data, and they automatically get maps and disaggregated data, which updates um, every time more data is information. So essentially providing them with um, with, with mapping and epidemiological um, functionality at their fingertips. Um, so I've, I'm quickly going to go through two case examples. I welcome you to also speak to the colleagues from Iran and Dr. Hervé Bouré, who have used these devices within their own country during the previous training program. Um, and I believe the same thing, there was no problems encountered with using the device in terms of connectivity and the outputs thereof. Um, we, as I mentioned, we do have this device here and during lunch and after today's session, we're happy to meet you outside and quickly show you the device as well. But I'm personally going to go through two case, def or case studies where these devices have been used. The first one being um, Zanzibar Island um, off the eastern coast of Africa. We established the surveillance system in 2016 and uh, confirmed the presence of canine mediated rabies throughout the island and we plotted those locations. <coughs> and um, this is that map. So this was um, about two years worth of rabies cases and um, the rabies cases are, here on here are not chronological so they are for the dura duration of the project. And um, I'm going to go through this map in a progressive way but the important thing is Every dot that appears was taken by the vaccinator. It took him about two seconds before, two to three seconds before vaccinating the dog. So this is the daily progression of that actual campaign. So this is one day's worth of work, and I'm just going to progress through it. But the idea was that we could track exactly where the vaccine was being used. We can track the time, the species that's being vaccinated, 
the age, uh, especially within the districts, and we get really nice epidemiological data as we continue to work. And this is at the fingertips of the campaign manager on a daily basis. In other words, at the end of the day, she can sit down or they can sit down and they can very quickly and easily look at the data, decide where the campaign needs to go to next uh, and decide whether an area hasn't be co been covered sufficiently. And obviously it also provides a level of accountability within the vaccinators who are tasked with going to a certain area on a day and they can actually be tracked in time and date and location as to their progress. I'm just going to take a step back. So that is the end of the map. We can see exactly where every single dog has been vaccinated. We can obviously break this data down further, but in our case, um, we can clearly see um, predominantly dogs vaccinated and we can see our estimated vaccination coverage increasing over time. And this was done fairly quickly and easily, simple Excel analysis. The second example is um, a slightly different strategic dog vaccination in uh, the capital city of Zimbabwe. This is currently ongoing. Um, so Harare is the capital city of Zimbabwe and it's, it is a metropolitan, extremely well-developed city um, that just happened to have a rabies outbreak for the last eight years. And um, by rabies outbreak, I'm referring to about um, 300 positive cases within the city limits over the last eight years in total. So in this instance, as a po instead of vaccinating inside the city, the decision was made, to, was made to start a vaccination belt around the city. So in a similar way, we chose the start point of the campaign and with various teams and devices in the field, we can actually track the progress of vaccination around the city. So this was the start of the vaccination belt. This is considered the end of the vaccination belt. So all they're doing is they are filling this gap by vaccinating the high density rural dog populations around the city. And in a similar way, there is accountability for all the vaccine that is being used um, within the project site because the time and the, the date can be monitored and obviously the location. So this campaign is still very early days, it's a, less than a month's worth of work and we can already see 5,000 dogs vaccinated. And what is nice is these are dogs that are, many of them have never seen primary animal health care. There's no idea of what the ecology is like and using the data we get a very good idea um, within the different locations, uh, the ratio of male to female dogs, which is obviously dependent on the use of the dog there. Uh, male dogs are predominant where dogs are used for hunting. Female dogs are more your companion animal within the more developed peri-urban peri areas. And then we can obviously, uh, we've got a very good idea of adult to juvenile ratios within the communities. And on multi-year visits, you can start at get a, getting a basic idea of population turnover. Um, the, these devices, although they've been set up and used as a vaccination device, um, the name gives it away. It's called the GOG Data Collector. And that is because these devices is essentially programming and a pretty face. <laughs> One could remove this label and replace it, and you can use it to collect any data using these satellite um, triangulation. So as long as the questions are limited to three questions of two options, it can be used. So it could be used, for instance, in a rabies vaccination campaign, can be reprogrammed very easily for post-vaccination surveys where you simply want dogs marked or unmarked, can be used in sterilization, sterilization campaigns, surveillance for rabies or any other disease in field, um, used at healthcare facilities for basic wound categorization and and the uses are essentially limited to to your imagination and and the variables so these devices although we use them for rabies vaccination at this point in time they are not limited to that so they're not a one-off product they can be reprogrammed very quickly and easily by the user to fit their specific needs um, as I mentioned, we have the one device here. We'll happily share it, um, the use of it, and let you see it and hold it and use it. Um, 
uh, in lunch and at the end of today's session. But if you have any questions, I'll happily answer them in the, in the discussion session later. Thank you.